I miss my wife. I love you. You complete me. And I'm just... Yeah, shut up. Just shut up. You had me at hello. Hey, at home. Oh, hey. What are you doing? I was just watching these romantic movies. And you know what I was thinking? What? I wish I had someone who could complete my... Sandwiches! No! Sentences! You do realize your phone already does that through predictive text? Wait a minute. Are you suggesting that I should fill my emotional void with a robotic AI instead of an actual human being? I didn't mean it that way. What I meant That's was... That's a wonderful idea! Oh god. Wait, on second thought... So welcome to another episode of I don't know what the Subscribe. I'm doing, but that's not gonna stop me from making bad stuff. Today, for all the single people out there, I wanna solve the biggest problem of them all. Being forever alone. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. So today, I'm going to create an AI that completes my sentences for me. This particular problem of figuring out what the next word or words in a sentence would be is called text generation. Where given a certain input, the model has to figure out a collection or a single word that can be considered as subsequent continuation of what was given to it. This is also often referred to as autocomplete, available in your phone, laptops, and email programs. We're first going to solve this through simple probability to show that not everything needs machine learning rammed down its throat. The first approach we'll use is called the Markov model. Now you might be wondering what is a Markov model? Well, it's a model created by a guy named Markov. I know, you're welcome. Subscribe right now to get more of these quality learning videos in your feed every month. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. The whole idea behind a Markov model is to figure out the prediction based on probability of what is the most likely word to occur after an arbitrary number of previous words. In probability theory, this is called conditional probability where a prior event decides the probability of a future one given a certain condition. One of the major pros of using this particular approach is its relative simplicity in implementation and execution. But two huge drawbacks. One, it's deterministic, meaning that it cannot predict anything beyond the scope of the dataset, which then leads us into the second drawback that it cannot understand the nuances of the language whether it's context, tenses, grammar, sentence structure, or anything else. It cannot decide or even understand on those. So the results might be a bit janky. So in short, it can only make decisions on the exact data that we provide it with. So if I were to give it a single sentence that I am the funniest man alive, it's going to say, You are not. No, well, not actually that. It's only going to choose from those selection of words and absolutely nothing else. Building this model is very trivial. All we need to do is convert this formula into this code. And if you want to look at that code, I have also attached the link in the description to my GitHub repository covering everything that we built throughout this whole video. Now, to get our predictions out of this particular model, we need to provide it with two starting words, and then it will auto-complete the rest. Now, to read these predictions, I want to set the mood first. Enjoy! The door opens, and for the first time, it's Perry, the professor, coming in. He loves his job as an oblivious alien. Julianne stares into the wall next to her and she feels kind of adrift. She takes off the plate of eggs, bacon and sausage with a wild, huh? He says, very well, behave yourself. She loves him, but she has to put him back to normal. She feels like how being in love with architecture is separate from him. I wanted to see the middle class language for myself. He feels bad for you, you loser. Okay, let's be honest. These aren't some of the best predictions, so we're not off to a good start. But for those that know me, know that I don't back down easily. So for all the single people out there, I'm not giving up on love just yet because I think I might have something up my sleeve. What's this? A literal joke. Oh, 
it says recurrent neural network on the other side. Remember the last video when we talked about RNNs and LSTMs? RNNs, which is recurrent neural networks, as well as LSTMs, which are long short-term memory cells that allow a neural network to actually remember a part of the previous input so that they could use that to make better guesses for their outputs. So let's build ourselves an RNN that will surely work better than what we had the last time around. No, I'm serious. Will you stop interrupt? <laughs> to build the RNN, I used a popular machine learning module called Keras, which allows me to build complex machine learning models in just a few lines of code. Now, fair warning, I did build the model and I did train it for a long time, and I got the accuracy to about 90%, but the outputs were still a bit unconventional. So I'm going to present them again in the best way I know how. She approaches the doctor and gets seated across him at a small table, speaking softly and with relaxation. I need you to chaperone me separately. The doctor neatly whistles and is upset that Carol avoids stepping on cracks with his eyes focused on the terrain in Carol's apartment. I'm sorry for never spotting you right there. In the open, a moment later, the doctor passes by a girl painting on a canvas, her easel set up in the middle of her shoulders, and she sees the shoulder and the sears of the shoulders, and she sees the shoulder and the sears of the shoulder, and she sees the shoulder and the sears of the shoulder, and she sees the shoulder and the sears of the shoulder. All right, time for a confession. Even this doesn't work. So what do we do now? Well, I was honestly very intrigued by the fact that there are people that build very complex and well-working models based on similar architectures. So what was it wrong with my approach that rendered such results? Upon further investigation, I realized what the problem was. Bad data. Machine learning models are often seen as these grab bag of tricks where they can do anything regardless of what sort of data, features, or pre-processing or feature engineering we do beforehand. During the starting phases of this project, I thought that the best sort of data I could provide my models with would be romantic movie scripts, not only because they would have dialogues focusing more towards love and romance, but also narration that would be more emotional. The only problem was that there was no certain data set that I could tap into to utilize, which is why I then resorted to scraping the internet and compiling all of the scripts I could find into a single text file. But a major problem with that approach was that I neither pre-processed the data properly nor did I validate it. Because at one point, my data had the script from Armageddon as some sort of romantic movie, which obviously screwed the results up really bad. And while I still sorted out these edge cases, I still couldn't get the data to the point where it could actually be more beneficial to the model than detrimental which is why we ended up with these rather unconventional results. I definitely learned a lot about how machine learning models are only part of the equation and something much more important than making those models is actually ensuring that the data that we provide it with is well-structured and pre-processed before time. Now, while this project was not the success I was hoping it to be, I did figure out a lot. And while the emotional void in me still remains, maybe one day I'll figure that out as well. Oh, shut Thank you so much for watching this visual documentation of my failures as a machine learning engineer. I hope you all were able to learn something about text generation, autocomplete, and good practices on creating and pre-processing datasets. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you have any ideas or suggestions, please put them in the comments down below. And if you want to make sure that you're one of the first people to watch these episodes as soon as they come out, make sure to subscribe to the AI Does AI channel on YouTube. Until next time, see ya.